I actually fell in love by electronic mail. You might think that it's not possible to know someone intimately enough to love them over electronic mail, but by the time I actually met Michael in person, I knew so much about him, I knew him so well by our communications electronically that I didn't care what he looked like. Hello and welcome to Micro Live. This week we're devoting the whole programme to a look at one of the major growth areas for the use of the personal micro, electronic mail. Electronic mail, or email for short, involves linking the computer, and it could be almost any micro, to the telephone system via a modem. Now, all a modem does is to take the zeros and ones of the computer circuits and to convert them into high and low tones, which can pass along the phone line. There are basically two ways of doing that. There are acoustic couplers, where you plug the phone itself into these cups here, and there are the more reliable direct coupled modems, which plug straight into the phone socket. Those can be as cheap as about £25. Well, why do people use electronic mail? Some recent research by IBM showed that as many as 70% of business phone calls fail to achieve their goal for one reason or another. And the Consumers Association magazine, which, revealed that out of every five first-class letters, two of them don't get there the next day. So it's not surprising that more and more companies and individuals are turning to electronic ways of getting messages through to people quickly. Kit Cowlishaw has a fellowship at Somerville College, Oxford. She's developing courses designed to encourage computer awareness, but she normally works for IBM, where centres all over the world are connected together by electronic mail. The telephone, compared to electronic mail, is like a stone axe. I've got to, I've got to hear busy signals. I've got to hear the phone ringing and no one being there. I've got to look at my watch before I pick up the telephone to see if, if someone might be asleep in Australia or, or Japan. I've got to know what time of day it is over there, whether they're sitting at their desk, whether they're at lunch. I haven't got any of those worries with electronic mail. I can just send my message and know that eventually they'll get it when they're reading their mail. Since the personal micro boom started about five years ago, the number of electronic mail users has doubled every year. Some commentators have even said that in business it could rival the use of the telephone by 1995. According to The Guardian, the French have over one million terminals giving access to email, and the service is expected to have as many as 10 million users by 1990. And in this country, The Observer puts the British market at £1.5 billion, again by 1990. Hammersmith was the first local authority in the country to use a new form of communications. Apart from its built-in telephone, the one per desk, or OPD, looks like any desktop computer with built-in programs ranging from word processing to spreadsheets. Built by ICL and incorporating some of the circuitry originally developed for the Sinclair QL, the one per desk is designed to be a sort of electronic jack-of-all-trades. But its real purpose is to communicate. With a built-in telephone and modem, it acts as an intelligent terminal. And in Hammersmith, it's used to send messages to any of 100 OPDs installed in the borough. The machine acts as an electronic memo pad. You just compose your message, add the name and telephone number of the person it's for, and the machine does the rest. It automatically dials up the number, and even if the person's out, the message is sent to their OPD and stored to be read later. The machines dial each other directly using the ordinary telephone system. There's no central computer. If you want to send the same message to more than one person, the machine will dial them in turn. But they can only read your message from their own desks. Well, that's one solution, but as you've seen, if you were sent a message on that system, you'd have to go to your own desk to read it. But an OPD, like other terminals, can be used in another way, because most electronic mail services make use of a central computer, which can be dialed up by you from anywhere. The system works like this. Someone dials up, enters his private mailbox on the computer, and from that mailbox sends a message to your mailbox. Now, all that happens within the computer system. The message then sits there until you dial up, enter your own mailbox, and see if there are any messages waiting. When you've read the message, you can reply to it or forward it to somebody else. And more than that, the central computer can act as a gateway to other computers, providing services like telex and access to information data banks all over the world. Well, let's see all that in action using a simple home system. I've already dialed up the computer on this using a modem here, and I'm into the telecoms computer now, and it's asking me which machine my electronic mail is on. So I'm going to tell it. I'm going to say, call 81. That's the number of the machine that I'm on. And it's connected. It says, please sign on. I'm getting a lot of garbage on this line here, but uh, that may just be a bad line I've got. And I give it my ID. 
Well, I hope it's getting the right signals. MIC001 is my identification and it isn't doing anything. It really is in a bad state, which means I'm going to uh, have to um, try and get out of this and re-log in again. Um, I'm afraid there's nothing happening here. Ah, it's asking me for my password. I'll try that and see if it's receiving from me. It may just be receiving from me, and it looks as if it is. It was actually receiving from me, but I was getting bad messages back. And there is a, a message for me asking for meeting. It's asking me to read or scan. I'll read it. And it comes back and there's the message. I'm getting a lot of junk coming back from the computer itself. Is it all right for you and Fred to meet me in the office at 10 o'clock, David? Well, the action, and you can see a lot of noise on the line there, but it seems to be receiving from me, so I'll carry on. And the action is I want to reply. So I'll send a reply and it's asking for the text. And I say, okay for me, Mac. And to send that off, I just hit dot S. And that should have immediately been sent. And I'm taking that that gibberish is actually saying it has been sent. This is a brilliant demonstration of British Telecom Gold and the quality of the lines we get. Action required. Well, I'm going to forward that to Fred because he might just be receiving things a little bit better than I am. He can tell me what it says. Fred. And that's forwarded to Fred and comments. Well, <laughs> I'm going to say um, I, I have a bad line. But this is okay for me. Now, you've only got my word for it. They're actually typed that. My typing just cannot possibly be as bad as that. Anyway, to send it, I just hit dot S and hopefully away it's gone. <laughs> well, and um, people ask if we're live, I don't know. Well, let's imagine I'm somewhere else in the country and I want to see if Mac has sent me anything. This time I'm using an Atari with some software that does all the fiddly bits for me. And here are some of the systems that I can log on to. There they are, it's gold I want, so I've selected that one and I will ask the machine to dial up. Press a button on the mouse and it tells me, yes, it is dialing. Well, it's doing that automatically, and while it's doing it, I can reveal that Mac was using that email system all the wrong way. No, it wasn't his fault, all that junk, but you see, he was reading his mail and sending a reply while he was online. And that costs him. On this system, it costs 11 pence a minute at peak times, and three and a half pence on top of, uh, that's off peak, on top of the call. Now that noise we've got there means that something's happening here. The machine is about to download everything straight into the memory. Then I can prepare my replies offline. That is, not connected to the system at all. Well, there's Mac's message, I think, coming up. Yes, it says something from Mac, so we certainly got it through. Now, I can prepare my replies and send them back without having to sit there typing with that bill ticking up. One of the most important things about email systems of the kind we've been showing is that you can also use them as a gateway or an entrance point to all kinds of independent services. Well, this one I'm using is called World Reporter and it's a database containing a complete text of various international newspapers and journals. The Washington Post, the Financial Times, The Economist, New Scientist and so on. Well, what I'm going to try to do, hopefully, is to look into The Guardian and I type in GDN, well, at least it's shown that, so that's something, and Oh, we're working again. There we go, I'm into The Guardian. And what I'm going to do is to ask it to get some information for me and to get any article in about two and a half years of The Guardian which have information on micro, micro, micro live and um, screens. And now it's going to search through about two and a half years of articles from The Guardian to determine any one that has micro live and screens. And there's one item and I can see what that has to say, the text. And that will bring out the article itself. And there it is, an article, City Firms Miss Computer Spies by Peter Large, their technology editor. And there is micro live, that's just appeared there. And there is screen, so it's selected that article. And in fact, it's a programme we did a few weeks ago on electronic spying. Well, there are many other databases, including a worldwide guide to air schedules and international hotels. And for the home user, there are computer user groups and a free service for schools. There's even a translation service where you enter the document in any European language. This is sent to a real human translator and you get it back in the language of your choice. Some of these services are free, but access to some of the more valuable business databases go up to £2.50 a minute, so take care.